Welcome back to Retro Break. Today we are going on a journey through 65 years of gaming history. Our journey through video game history begins right here in 1959 with the PDP-1 computer. This was one of the first ever computers to host a video game, which was 1962's Space War. And while that's not the first true video game, it was one of the earliest examples of a game that was shared between multiple different people. And it was so cool to see it on display here at this event. Despite the fact that it was only a display and it wasn't actually interactive, it was still such a cool thing to see and a really interesting piece of video game history. Now moving forward to 1971, we have two really interesting arcade machines here. These are computer space and we have the single player and the two player models here on display. Unfortunately, neither of them were switched on, so there was no gameplay to be had, but again, it is a really interesting piece of video game history. And interestingly, the game was actually developed by Nolan Bushnell, who went on to form Atari a few years later. And speaking of Atari, of course, the next thing we came across was Pong, which was their first official arcade game released one year later in 1972, which of course went on to become a household name and one of the most popular video games of the 70s and 80s. Towards the end of the 1970s, Atari released another smash hit in the arcades in the form of Asteroids. This one actually used a vector-based display, which means that the graphics look really crisp and clear. Even today, it is so engrossing to look at this screen and to see the bright white light shining back at you with the gorgeous trails going around it. And that brings us on to the next vector-based display, which is the Vectrex. The Vectrex came out in 1982 and it's such a unique system. Still to this day, it is the only home video game console with a vector-based display. I love mine and I actually did a video on it a few years ago. So if you want to know my thoughts on a bunch of games for the system, then check the link in the description after this. Throughout the 70s and 80s, there was a wealth of different game consoles, computers, and home conversions of arcade games, such as the Magnavox Odyssey 2 here. The first Magnavox Odyssey was actually one of the first ever consoles to support interchangeable cartridges. Here in the UK, microcomputers like the ZX Spectrum, the Commodore and the Amiga were all incredibly popular and they actually gave rise to something we called bedroom coders, which were kind of precursors to the indie game developers that we have today. Games for these systems mostly ran on cassette tapes, which were incredibly easy and cheap to buy and also easy to copy as well, which I'm sure helped their success in some way. And then of course, over in Japan, you have Nintendo and the incredibly successful Famicom, which came out a few years later over in America and the UK as the Nintendo Entertainment System. The game on display here was Contra, which is one of Konami's most popular games, and still it gets sequels even to this day. There's a new one coming out in a few weeks' time. One of the most interesting computers to come out of Japan was the MSX. This version here is one of the last ones ever released. And the MSX is a really interesting idea. It was basically created by Microsoft to be an industry standard computer before Intel took over. And it's something that I would love to try and get for myself one day and to experience some of the different games available for the system. Nintendo, Sega, and Sony all developed consoles throughout the 90s, and Microsoft joined in from the early 2000s as well. One of my favorite consoles from around this period was the Sega Dreamcast. As you can see here, playing Soul Calibur, the graphics on the Dreamcast were just outstanding when it was released. Sat here next to the N64, the difference is just night and day.
That's not to say that I don't like the N64 though. In fact, when I got it as a kid, it fast became my favourite system, and one of the reasons why was Zelda Ocarina of Time. In fact, while I was going around this event capturing footage, my girlfriend decided to play all the way up until the end of the first dungeon, and it holds up so well today and it looks so nice when it's set up properly on a nice CRT like this. One of my favourite games on display here was Boulder Dash for the Atari 400 here, released in 1984. I was just blown away by how smooth the scrolling was in this game. I am not used to seeing that from Atari, so this completely blew me away, and I always love the Boulder Dash games too. In the mid-2000s, consoles started having online stores, and so began the indie game boom. There were so many great games from all different genres, and now the floodgates had opened to let independent creators once again, just like the 80s, come back in full force and release their games for the world to enjoy. One of my favourite indie games from the early 2010s was here, on display. It's called Super Hexagon, and I really enjoyed playing it back in the day. And while I was at the show, I actually got the record for that session. The extra power of consoles from the 2000s allowed developers to come up with really new, fresh, interesting ideas, like Katamari here, which is definitely one of my favourite games from the PlayStation 2 era. Just look at how fun and unique this game is. We need more games like this today. Another very important part of video game history is handheld gaming. I was a massive fan of handheld gaming, and I still am. My first handheld device was the Game Boy, but as you can see here, it goes back way further than that. There was an influx of LCD-based handheld games in the 80s and early 90s, and it's such a fascinating part of gaming history that I really need to try and get more into, so it was great seeing some of those devices here at the show. Multiplayer games as well obviously play a massive part in people's love for video games. Bringing my friends to play some of my favourite games together as a kid is some of my happiest memories that I have, and seeing people here at the show enjoying multiplayer games together brought back those fond memories. I was very excited to try out Barman here for the Sega Saturn because that is a game that has a really interesting multiplayer mode that can go up to 10 players at once, but unfortunately it was set up wrong at the show and it was only in single player mode, but even so, we still had fun playing it because Bomberman is Bomberman. And finally, we go full circle back to the arcade games where we started this video off. I would love to cover all of these different types of games in the future in a lot more detail on my channel, so please subscribe if you're interested in gaming history as much as I am, because I have a lot that I want to share. And if you enjoyed what you saw in this video and you want to experience this event for yourselves, it's actually on until the 14th of April in Doncaster. It's called Game On, and I have to give a huge thank you to Games You Loved for giving me tickets to be able to attend the event and to make this video, which I hope you all enjoyed very much. If you want to see more event tours from me, then check the playlist up there on the top right, and I'll see you all again next Friday for another video. Goodbye. <laughs>